All right. So I'm sure you have heard about Jibbi before because it's so common nowadays. Um, we have been talking about it, you know, for a long time, but now it is here. Jigbee is contending to be one of the one of the IoT protocols, although the result is still to be seen. So we'll talk about Jigbee. What are the features? What are different versions? What is the protocol architecture? And then we will get into some math, AODB and DSR routing, etc., etc. So Jigbee. Um, is for um, you can call it machine to machine for home automation or IoT protocols, industrial monitoring, and um, wireless switches, meter reading, patient monitoring. So when you get um, one of these um, wireless, pro is that something to do with the class? <laughs> so when you when you get any remote uh, device, you don't know, it might be using Zigbee. Okay? And so, industrial monitoring and control applications requiring small amounts of data, which are turned off most of the time, and uh, we have heard it many times now so, so far, ultra low power, low data rate, multi-year battery life. For all of these, Zigbee is good. Okay? Just like Bluetooth is good, and then later on I will tell you Wi-Fi is good too. There's some version of Wi-Fi. But Zigbee is trying to be very simple protocol stack, 32 kilobyte protocol stack compared to 250 kilobyte for Bluetooth. So one thing you will notice is that the Zigbee and Bluetooth are like this. They are competing on every step and everybody who sells basically Zigbee will tell you why Bluetooth is not good and Bluetooth guys will tell you why Zigbee is not good. So they are competitors. It goes to 100 meters and up to 65,000 nodes. It runs at um, in three different bands. And by the way, these are all license exempt ISM bands as they call them. It runs in 2.4, it runs at 9.15 and it runs in 8.68 in Europe. So 2.4 we already know about, same thing as Bluetooth, but this has an additional one, 9.15. I, you know, where there's little band available and they can do up to 40 kilobits per So it uses 802.15.4, that's why I first described Mac and Phi, right? <laughs> but then it, there is a group called Jigbee Alliance, which is a group of companies. They got together and they said, how do we use 15.4? Just like Wi-Fi Alliance. So Jigbee Alliance, their product are certified as Jigbee compliant. And so they decided the rest of this protocol. And um, so they said, okay, <coughs> we can have up to 254 devices or 64,000 simpler nodes. So basically, as you will notice that um, all of these things are designed for very large networks, but if you have 64,000, nothing will work anyway. So 256 is closer to the truth, 254. And um, this is named after the zigzag dance of the honeybees. Honeybees fly like this, I didn't know that, but anyway they do. And so <laughs> that is what zigbee is, zigzag um, dance of the honeybees. And direction of the dance indicates the location of the food. So if a bee knows that there is, it wants to go, it won't go straight like that. It goes like this, right? And so, so that's that's the jig bee. multi hop ad hoc mesh networks. So the rest of it is very similar to what we heard before. Is that um, it is a mesh ad hoc means peer to peer. So there is no <laughs> access point or anything. Uh, Multi-hop routing, you can go from one place to the next using other nodes. And um, so multi-hop means the messages are sent to other nodes. Ad hoc means no fixed topology, the nodes discover each other. Mesh means, you know, there are cycles. And uh, topology means loop possible. So now there are two different things, okay? So this is important to understand. There is a mesh routing and mesh topology. Topology means no cycles. Routing means forwarding simply. Basically, mesh forwarding is standard forwarding. You go from here and then other one forwarded somebody else and so on and so forth. So generally, we don't call it mesh. When you do it on the IP, we don't call it mesh routing. Why? Because in the IP, we have routers which do the job of forwarding. 
but we call it mesh when the end nodes start forwarding. Okay, so this is important to understand. So let's say I am in one house and this is another house, this is another house and for house transmission to that house the packet comes here and then I transmit as a good neighbor to her and she transmits to him. That is mesh. There is no, there is no mesh network here, there is no loop. But this is called mesh because it is friendly, you know, neighbor to neighbor forwarding. Okay. Mesh routing. Mesh topology is when things are connected not in a tree. We call it a mesh. Right? And if we are not the end nodes, if we are routers, then we don't call it a mesh. Right? This is my job to transmit, right? When I do out of my job, then it is a mesh. So, mesh routing, mesh topology, ad hoc topology, mesh route, mesh multi hop routing. Okay. So, we understand those words. Four words. Stochastic addressing. So, the thing is that um, these are some of the new features um, is that previously each one would be given a number, the nickname 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and there were some problems with that. So, now we have stochastic with dry random number and that's your name. That is called stochastic addressing. Mechanism for address the con conflict resolution. So, now the, there is another problem with random number generation is that if two people draw the same, I mean, two people, if I draw the same number twice, then two people will get the same name. So, what do you do? So, then you need a mechanism for that. And um, one advantage of stochastic addressing is that the parents don't need to maintain an ad assigned address table and this will come up later on, right now it is difficult to explain, but the idea is if I assign 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then I have to remember that, okay, I have assigned 4, 5, 6, 6 7, 5 is gone and no, there is nobody after 10, you know, something like that. That is, that is the assigned address table. With the random number, we don't have to remember it. Anyway, link management. Each node maintains quality of links to neighbors. Link quality is used as the link cost in routing. So basically, if the node link is not very good, then it will have a high cost. If the link is good, then it will have a low cost. So we, we know the link quality of every link and then we, we announce it and we, so everybody knows that this is not a good link or this is a good link. Okay? So the cost, there is no cost. I mean, there is nobody charging anything but the cost is determined by the quality. Um, frequency agility. Node experience its interference report to channel manager a trust center which then selects another channel. So basically let's say we decided to use a particular um, 5 megahertz channel or whatever, right? And, um, and that channel has a lot of noise so that those people say, well, I'm hearing too much noise from the outside. Then we will say, okay, right, let's try channel 2. That's what this means, frequency. Nodes experience interference report to channel, manage, channel manager and the manager then selects another channel. So basically everybody tells that. So basically if, if, the, if there is too much interference, their link cost will be very high and then it will say, okay, well, we can't afford that kind, that kind of high cost. Let's move to another channel. Multicast is allowed. Many to one routing is allowed. And many to one routing is quite common in IoT. Why? Because you might have many light bulbs, they are reporting to one manager. You might have many televisions, many monitors, or many of anything that you want, you know, and then they are all reporting to one place. So many to one. Asymmetric link. Each node has different transmit power and sensitivity. So my cost to her may be different than her cost to me because, you know, depending upon the battery level, we may not have enough power to communicate both ways. So it might be easy for you to send me a packet which I can send to her, but it will not be, it will not be the same cost if you want to send from her to me, right? Okay, question. Uh, yeah, what is the PRO, okay. So PRO is basically professional or something like that, uh, is that these are new features that are coming in. So Jigbee has been around for quite some time, as you will see, actually I probably have deleted this slide here. <coughs> so Jigbee has many versions. 
just like Bluetooth has version 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 4.3. Jigbee has many versions. So, Jig, the Pro features are the latest version features. The previous ones are the standard features, this one. And these are the late, some of the later new features. Thank you for asking. That's a good one. Asymmetric link we know now fragmentation and reassembly is allowed. So we noticed that in 15.4 fragmentation and reassembly was not allowed. So this layer now handles fragmentation and reassembly. So basically Jigbee is on the top of 15.4. New power management routers and coordinators use main power and end devices use battery. So basically routers and coordinators. So in this diagram that we saw, where was the diagram? Not here. And the coordinators probably are connected to the electrical power and um, and everything else is connected to batteries. Security and they have two levels of security, standard security and high security. End devices get new security key, key when, they, when they bake up, which sounds like a lot of work, but anyway. So that must be one of the old features, but, but anyway, one of the features is that you can get a new key every time you wake up, because if you have to do that, I think that's be just too much work. So, so that may be an old feature, but basically there is everything it could be encrypted if you need to be, and it doesn't have to be encrypted by the way, but you could encrypt it. So the device types, we already know now, coordinator, what it does, coordinator selects the channel, it starts the network, assigns the short addresses to other nodes and transfers packets to other nodes from another node. Routers, transfers packets to from the routers is also similar to that but this is a different function. You see it only transfers the packets where the coordinator does many other things plus transfers the packet. So coordinator is a super set of route. Full function devices, only full function devices can become a router or coordinator. Reduced function devices they become only leaf. And Jigbee Trust Center is the security center. So this is a totally different function. So the coordinator does not have to be the trust center, but there could be another node that could be declared as the trust center. That keeps all the keys, all the certificates and things like that. So you could have a computer in your home that could act as a trust center. And gateway is the one that connects to other nodes, other networks, for example, to Wi-Fi, to Bluetooth, or what have you in even wired networks that would be a gateway all right so now let's see one more time what is the difference between router and coordinator so, so coordinator is a superset it does all these other functions and what is ffd and router let's say yeah ffd can be a router and router has to be an ffd right but ffd doesn't have to be a router an ffd could be a leaf ffd can be a leaf yeah so it will be rs then it could be RFD, yeah. So the thing is, RFD has cannot be anything other than leaf. FFD can be a leaf, can be a router, can be a coordinator. Okay, all right. And trust center. So the trust center, sorry, I think my time is up, but trust center is a security function which is totally independent of all of this. Nothing to do with the wireless. Okay? That is your um, safe where you keep all the keys.